But I do want to talk some Rivian and bring in our next guest, which is Kevin Green. He's a senior markets correspondent for the Schwab Network. Uh, Kev, uh, this is a, a, a stock that's been on a roller coaster ride just today alone. Traded as low as 1585 right at the market open, rallied up to almost 17, and it's about middle of the range right now. Yeah, a lot of volatility in this name. And actually, Alex, if you look at it over the last six months, we continue to see a lot of volatility when it comes to Rivian. But we are seeing a downgrade when it comes to Barclays. They downgraded the stock to equal weight from overweight with a new price target of $16, and that's down from $25. So a pretty significant cut when you're looking at that price target. Now, they do acknowledge the fact that Rivian's technology is some of the best that's in the business here, but the demand uh, demand is slowing when it comes to EVs, not only domestically here in the United States, but also globally when you're looking at some of the macroeconomic factors factors that are out there, especially higher interest rates. So their biggest fear right now is that even though they are starting to hit the production numbers, uh, they're not going to be able to offset some of the demand pressures that they are seeing. And that's going to also squeeze margins, which has been very hard for this company to become free cash flow positive. They also noted the fact that they continue to have to raise capital. And this has been a thing that has driven the stock price down because they continue to issue out senior convertible notes, which uh, those notes can then turn into equity, which dilutes the shareholders. If you dilute the shareholders, then you're going to see your stock move to the downside here. So kind of a little bit of a technical factor while we are seeing some pressure on the, on the shares, but also when you're looking at the macroeconomic dynamics that are out there, also seeing a little bit of pressure. That's why we are seeing this price cut as well as this downgrade. So Kevin, when we look at Rivian and like honestly the overall EV space, because we do discuss Tesla quite a bit, it's down about 2.7%. I mean, is right now there just overall like lack of enthusiasm in the EV space? Because I feel like we're so quick to like punish each individual name, but this is a broader trend. I mean, this is something we're seeing in a lot of these EV names that are especially here in the US, like we're just fighting for what it seems like shrinking market share. And so it's hurting, it seems like all these companies. Yeah, I mean, this, the, the demand is definitely slowing. I think the price wars also has put some pressure on the margins when it comes to not only uh, Rivian, but when you're looking at Tesla or BYD. So I think that's also providing a little bit of downside pressure when it comes to the equity markets here. The only, the only thing that I say that is a little bit of a bright spot for Rivian compared to, let's say, a Lucid, is that Rivian is starting to hit its production targets. That's going to be a key area. And if it can continue to ramp up, the cost per vehicle is also going to go down, which should improve their margins over the long term. Now, unfortunately, Unfortunately, since we're in a high interest rate market, it's going to be very hard to try to ramp up production and try to get that uh, th those products out the door if there's lack of demand. But they're scaling the best that they could possibly do at this point in time, which I think it would be a little bit better than maybe like a Lucid, which is just having a, a really big issue when it comes to trying to scale the business. So I'm kind of right there with you. I think the price wars had a little bit more of an impact when it comes to the EVs as a whole. And for Rivian, just trying to raise capital, dilute your shareholders, that makes you know investors a little bit uh, uncomfortable. And then also uh, trying to ramp up in a high interest rate environment also squeezes margin, which makes it a little bit harder uh, when you're trying to become free cash flow positive and trying to be profitable as a company. Yeah, and I think that's also a really good point because unlike Tesla, Rivian is in a different cash situation and completely different situation as far as overall strengthening its balance sheet because we still have a lot of issues they need to address before this company can be more stable and less volatile in nature. But we will leave it there. Really great insight. As always, Kevin Green, senior markets correspondent here for the network.